So what would be the right way to do it? They should have done 5 times 2 cubed is 8, and the answer to this one was 40. Oh my goodness. This is, this is, well, I circled the error, so I, I circled the part that went wrong in red, and then I corrected it after. All right. Is there any mistakes in B? Yes, what did they do wrong? 3 times 2 is 6, so this is a problem. They did 4 times 3 is 12, that's also a problem. Okay. If you were doing it right, they should have had a 9, and 4 times 4 times 4 is 64, and this is what, 576? Okay, any mistakes in C or is C good? No? 8 to the 0, okay? Not 8 times 0 because that would be different too. So this is our mistake. It should be 1 plus 125, 126. Thank you. It's neat when I do numbers. Okay. And did he say D was good? No. no. Some people are saying D is not good? Order of operations. So what number is the first number that's wrong? The 11 is wrong. Why is the 11 wrong? Well, maybe we need to show a little bit more work. 3 cubed is 27, minus 2 to the 4 is 16, and 5 squared is 25. So that Seems to be like they did that, but what did they do next? They subtracted, but there is a multiplication right there. 16 times 25 is 400. Okay, is that right? Okay. The way my 25 times table, I always imagine having quarters. If I had 16 quarters, I know I have four dollars. So that's how I do my 25 times table. Makes sense. Oh, you didn't do that on purpose. You just did it. Oh wow. I feel like And we get negative three hundred and seventy-three as an answer. Okay. What about E? Is E good? No. What's the first number? Well, probably this one is, everything's wrong. So let's, let's look at, we have brackets. Do we have stuff to do in the brackets? Yes. In this bracket, 3 to the 4 is 81, minus 2 to the 5 is 32, 6 to the 3 is 216. We still have brackets. Is there stuff to do inside the brackets? Yes. So we have to do the 81 minus 32 and get 49. What is that? That is a good question, because that's going to be, okay, let me, do you want me to do some mental math on this? Okay. It's not kind of, it's not that subtle. Am I, I'm doing, I'm doing all right? I'm doing, I'm still, I'm still, I'm, how am I doing? Nice. So sometimes, sometimes when you're multiplying a 49 times 216, okay, sometimes. Sometimes one number more, one number less is a lot easier. So in this case, I thought 50 times 216 would be easier because that is 10,800. 
right? A couple of ways you could do the 50 times 216, you could do 100 times 216, which is really easy mental math. You just add the zeros on, right? And then I cut that in half, and I get that. And then that's one 216 is too many, so then I would have to subtract a 216 off of there and get 10,584. Okay. Also really easy is if you have a mechanism which lets you push a 4 and then 9 and then an X and then a 2 and then a 1 and a 6 and then an equal sign. I don't know. I've never seen one. <laughs> these big, these big ones. They're not weird. Okay. Moving on. The next questions. Wait for it. Uh, him and Jackson had another thing they had to go to today. So they are missing today. Okay, evaluate. So first of all, we have to know what. What does the word evaluate mean when it's in a math question? Figure out, get an answer in the end, okay? If x is negative 2 and y is 3. So we're going to have to substitute. Wherever there's an x, we can write a negative 2. Wherever there's a y, we can write a 3. Usually when we do this, we use brackets to hold the number. So there's an x, and then I have a squared. And then I have a minus 3, and there's an x, so I'll write a minus 2. And there's a y, so I'll put brackets and put a 3. And by putting the brackets there, like, the reason the brackets are important is because this is 3 times x times y. If you didn't write brackets and just went 3 and then x and then y, doesn't that look like 3 times minus 23? Not 3 times. It just looks like 3 minus 23. If you don't put the brackets there, it originally was multiplying. You can't change it into subtracting new numbers that don't exist. So the brackets hold it, but they also make sure that we still have multiplication. So I just rewrote everything, but plugged in the numbers that match up. Awesome. Next up, order of operations. We have brackets, but they're just holding numbers. Okay? We have an exponent? Yes. That exponent, is it to the 2 and the negative, or just to the 2? To both. So negative 2 times negative 2, that would be 4. Okay? Here, I have all multiplying. A negative 3 times a negative 2 times a 3. We, yeah, we can do these two first. That'll be 6, and then times 3 will be 18. And does it make sense that it will be positive? And then I still have a positive 4. Yeah, we've got order of operation. We've got 8 plus 18 plus 4. And then that is equal to 30. Awesome. Substitutions still have x equals negative 2 and y is equal to 3. Okay, I want you to try this one on your own. Okay, and then I'll show the work. And if you made mistakes, you can circle your mistakes in red and correct it. I'm letting you try. 
you use your bracket when you substitute when you substitute something in put it in brackets right do your order of operations All right, and so you can keep going. I'll start putting up the answer, and you can check where things went well and where things went bad. So we got a negative. We got a negative, too. I'm, I... All right, how do you do in step one? Step one is just putting numbers where the letters are and putting them in brackets. Yes. Of value. Mm -hmm. It's good to put it in brackets. There are some places where it doesn't, like, if this question was this, x plus y, and you were substituting, if you put it in brackets, or you didn't put it in brackets, it would be the same thing. Right? So there are sometimes, now, sometimes, though, if you don't put brackets, things go wrong for multiplication, for exponents, OK? And the second thing that sometimes goes wrong is you get tempted to do too much math at once, OK? Like, the temptation is like, I'm plugging in a negative. Oh, a negative times a negative is positive. I'm not even going to write a negative right away. Okay, that is a temptation, but you might accidentally not follow order of operations. So if we take our time, okay, we've substituted in. We've got lots of brackets, but in this case, our brackets are just holding numbers. There's no operations to do inside. Next, we go to exponents. Do we have any exponents? Yes. We have an exponent here. The 4, is it to the 2 and the negative, or just to the 2? It's to both. So. <laughs> is it to the 2 or the negative, or to both? Just to both. <laughs> OK, so negative times negative times negative times negative, this will be 16. And the squared goes to the 3, that will be 9. Plus 2, the negative 2 squared, that will be 4. And we still have a 3. Now, technically, if you wanted to, now you're done exponents. Next up is multiplying. If you wanted to multiply this all out, you could. A negative times a negative times 2 times 3 will be positive. Six. You could, but you always have to, whenever you're showing your math work, you should write out everything that was above in the next line. If you're going to just work on this part, you have to rewrite the other part, just so you don't forget about it. We also run into math problems or making mistakes in our calculations. If we just try to work on something, and then forget about something temporarily, chances are you'll forget about it more than temporarily. Or you're like, what was over there again? 
and you get confused. So now I can multiply. 16 times 9, this will be negative 144. Plus 24, plus 6. Equals, now we can add them, negative 114. Oh. So it shows, is it easy to make a mental math mistake? Absolutely, right? Even if you can do, right, lots in your head, take your time. Do one step at a time. All right, next one. Give you guys a head start. It's, whoa. No, no, we don't forget about this one. This one, I'll keep it up for a bit, sorry. No, you haven't forgotten. It's negative 114. Okay, let's see how you did. We have a 2. Instead of the x, we'll write a negative 2. Instead of the y, we'll write a 3. Minus 3, instead of the y, 3. Divided by negative 2. 4 minus 3 squared. Whew. Step one, plugging things in. I mean, if you always plug things in with brackets, it's pretty hard to mess up step one. Okay? Do we have brackets? Yes. But they're just holding numbers, so we don't have to do anything with brackets with bed mass. Do we have an exponent? Yes, we do. So let's do those. We're on my main fraction line. Is the 2, the negative, or both? It's the both. Or as Nevaeh would say, negative. only the both. Just the negative 2. <laughs> so negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 would be negative 8. Okay? Do we have any more exponents? Yes. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. This one will be 16. Do we have any more exponents? Yes. 3 squared is 9. Okay, have we done all our exponents? So if you wanted to, you could do 3 times 3 and write that as 9. You could, you could have left it because our next stage is we have to multiply anyway. So here we have 2 times negative 8. That's going to be negative 16. Minus 9. And now that I'm done the multiplying, if you wanted to, you could subtract on the bottom. What's 16 minus 9? 7. Okay, and then negative 16 minus 9, minus 25 over 7. Crush that one. Nice. Excellent. Okay, next up. You guys are getting better. Try A. New numbers. All right, let's do a check. How did the plug-in go? Did you get 3 and then x will put in a half? That'll get squared minus 4, another half, plus 2, and then y is negative 1, and it gets squared. Okay. We have brackets, but they're just holding numbers. We have exponents. Yes. How do you do a fraction to an exponent? Well, an exponent is just repeated multiplication. So 1 half squared means 1 half times 1 half. It's going to be 1 quarter. We're on to fractions now. There's no exponents here, so we'll leave that for now. Here we have another exponent, negative 1 squared. Is just the negative 1 or both the negative and the 1 included? <laughs> Didn't I say the same thing twice? <laughs> okay, yes, it'll be just the negative 1 or both the 
negative and the 1. <laughs> that gets squared, and negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. And now we multiply. How do you multiply 3 times a quarter? Well, you're multiplying fractions, so we have to remember our fractions rule. And you can make the 3 into a fraction. It's 3 over 1. And then if you're multiplying fractions, you multiply the tops, you multiply the bottoms. You get some very complicated multiplications happening here. You really have to know your 1 times table. 3 times 1? Good. Oh, you guys are on fire today. 4 times 1? Oh. Here again, you're multiplying 4 times a half. This is like 4 over 1. You can multiply the tops. You can multiply the bottoms. Can you see that you would get 4 over 2? OK. So I'm going to write that as 4 over 2 right now, even though some of you probably can see that you could simplify that. And then we have plus 2. If you did simplify, you would have 3 over 4 minus 2 plus 2. Now, you are normally trained to work from left to right. You read your books from left to right. You do lots of stuff from left to right. They do that in Japan. Really? Yes. They start. Start at the back and go to the front. But they would call the back the front, the front the back. Look at this. What? Hey, did you see what just happened? Mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> so here, I wouldn't actually do 3 quarters minus 2 and get negative 5 quarters and then add 2 after that. I would just do 9 is 2 plus 2. That's 0. So the answer is going to be 3 quarters. Oh, no. We got more. We got, we got the... No, we haven't done part B. Oh, B. Oh, B is very important. Do you know what the Do you know what the shorthand way of writing important is? No. I'll teach you. This Yes, K stands for fun. This is important. Not bad. It does. It's actually the shortened form of important. You never knew that. It's, it, it's Latin. It comes from note bene or something like that, which I probably pronounced really important. <laughs> okay, you look it up. You, you maybe maybe I've been lying to you all this time, right? Because right, you can you can, yeah. You can look up on the internet. What does NB stand for? And, and it's going to be new balances show up probably. But see if important shows up. And what we really need to work on, and you guys can help by going on to social media, is start promoting. Mark well. No, that's not important. It is important. Note Benny. Hey, I got the Note Benny. Which what means is, Mark Well. What does Mark Well mean? <laughs> well, it could be Definition of is important. Mm. Mark, Mark, Mark well, well, that's the direct that's the direct translation of Note's Mark and Bene as well. Okay? But what I need you guys to do is start start on social media, start influencing everywhere so that by the time we get to 2050, everybody's like, oh, yeah, K stands for fun. That's short for fun. Yeah. That's good. I think we can do it. <laughs> okay, let's see how do we did. We would do our substitution. Negative 2, we have an X we put. 1 half, it's cubed. Then we have a negative 1. It's to the 0. 
We have brackets, but they're just holding numbers. We have exponents. What's a half cubed? Well, it would be half times a half times a half. No. One over eight. What is negative one to the zero? No. Is is the the zero go just to the one or is zero go to the one and the negative? Right. Just the negative one. <laughs> So it's going to be anything to the 0 is 1. <laughs> You're the one who said that first. And then, how do you multiply fractions? Well, this is negative 2 over 1. This is 1 over 1, although you're probably pretty good at multiplying by 1, but realize you don't need that. And in the end, you're going to get negative 2 over 8, which reduces to negative 1 over 4. Yeah, you can either, so now you can either do that. So Marley said, you, you can either work on your major project or the, or the homework. Okay? Yeah. You're, oh, that's not very nice. <laughs> <laughs>